everybody. So thank you all for tuning in. I have a very, very special guest returning to the channel again, Mr. Disney Family Man 23, aka George. And we are going to discuss a host of topics today, including the mission breakout changes, Snow White's Enchanted Wish, and the Disney Cruise Line announcement today. Disney Family Man 23, welcome back, buddy. Hey, how's it going? Glad to be back and talk some more Disney. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. So let's dive right in. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And uh, this is from Dateline Disneyland, which I have to say they, they've had the best coverage so far of the opening, the, the, the opening day or the soft opening day of Disneyland Resort uh, that happened a couple of days ago. Their pictures are absolutely gorgeous. But I wanted to start off with the Snow White Enchanted Wish changes from what you've seen, George, what are your thoughts on these changes? Well, I have to say I did a brief video um, a couple weeks ago, just more so just giving the gist of, you know, Snow White, Scary Adventures, trans, you know, transforming into the Enchanted Wish. And I didn't really know too much about it, which I really don't think no one really knew what it was going to be about until we actually saw the inner structural of the ride itself. And... I have to say by the photos and the video, I wasn't going to look at it because I didn't want to be, <laughs> you know, I wanted to be surprised, but Lord knows when the next time I'll be able to come back out to Disneyland, <laughs> you know, until they lift everything. So I thought, you know what, why not? Let's just see what it's all about. And I have to say, especially at the finale, I mean, I don't want to give too much away, but like yeah. the finale of like Snow White and the Prince and everything, like the effects with it being just a simple dark ride, they put a lot of time and effort into this attraction rather than say, you know what, this isn't a real big e-ticket attraction. So let's just throw a couple new things in there. Let's change some things. I mean, they really put in a lot of time and effort into this, into this attraction. They, they did. And you know, it, it like they've had a history now for the past few years. I don't remember exactly when it started. I want to say about maybe seven or eight years ago when they when they revamped the Alice in Wonderland dark ride at Disneyland. And I remember getting off that ride after they re reimagined it, so to speak, and being blown away. And the way that they've, um, you know, sort of blended the physical sets with the, you know, the animation projections, mm -hmm. I thought were flawless. And it looks like Snow White is on par with that. You know, I love, like, we're looking at it right here from Dateline Disneyland, you know, the, the seven dwarfs, you see the shadows against the wall, the beautiful projections. I mean, look at the colors, but there's a physicality of it surrounding it. And it's just, it's absolutely breathtaking. Absolutely breathtaking. And there's even a scene, I think, in the queue line as well, where it shows Snow White and the dwarves dancing and their silhouettes inside the cottage. I believe Incredible. it was covered by um, uh, Best Life and Beyond. They were in the queue line, and I believe they were filming uh, the cottage as they were in the, the queue line. And it shows um, the silhouette of Snow White and the dwarves dancing, uh, sort of like the scene how they have at the Seven Dwarfs Mine Train at the end. Um, of that attraction, but it was just the silhouette. You couldn't actually, it wasn't actually animatronic, but it was a silhouette of animation. Sort of like how they did with the dwarves on that top picture there. That's interesting. That's interesting. And I'm glad you mentioned the, the, the mind train because there's a lot of elements like what you just mentioned. And even this, the dopey right here that we're looking at with the big diamonds in his eyes <laughs> that remind me a lot of the mind train. I think the mine train actually has that same dopey, don't they? If I'm not mistaken, they have something similar. They still have um, more of the uh, up to date audio animatronics that you know it's the more um, mode of the motion that is more uh, has more physicality to it, but more so. But with the diamonds in his eyes and everything, that's pretty much almost to the same animatronic as the mine train. Now, Very speaking of that, I wanted to ask you because I had. Sure. Uh, I, I wouldn't say too much of a negative aspect to it, but I wanted to get your opinion on it, that when I sure. saw the attraction, I noticed in the very beginning scenes, they still kept the original uh, audio animatronics of the dwarves, like where they're inside the cottage and what have you. And they, you, you could see that older type look to the attraction. And then as you move on, 
you could start to see the updated, you know, with the dopey here. And I think there was a doc one as well that do you think that by kind of splicing both of them together, it kind of throws off to say, okay, well, this is the older version and here's the newer version as the ride goes on. Do you think that Disney should have updated the whole thing entirely, like completely replaced in all of the animatronics? Uh, I'm kind of torn on it. Uh, I'm a little torn on it. Part of me says no, because I kind of think it's good to have some of the old, you know, from the original attraction um, as kind of an homage to the original version of the attraction. But then part of me uh, kind of agrees that like, if you're going to do it, do it 100%. And, you know, it, you're right. I mean, when you see the newer stuff to the older stuff, you can definitely see, you know, the, 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 the contrast, right. The stark difference between the two. So I'm really torn on that. I, I, you know, I don't know. Um, I think eventually they probably will update, update those other ones to kind of match. But uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe they should have. Maybe they should have. Maybe there would have been a little more continuity w within the, the one attraction. One thing that I was really wishing that they would have updated, because I bet you that Disney could come up with some really cool, immersive, uh, technological way of updating the transition between the queen turning into the old crone. Like I would have oh, loved yeah. to have seen, I mean, I still love that scene, you know, to this very day, you know, I love when, you know, the audio animatronic spins around and you see the back of her as the <laughs> queen, but when she turns around, you see the old hag, you know, yeah. I think that's still a great scene, but I would have loved to have seen a more technological approach to say, Hey, we got this great technology today. I would love to see something more innovative. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And that's the, that's, I'm really glad that, they're taking these old dark rides and they're plussing them because that's a possibility down the road. What you're, what you're suggesting is something that they might do eventually. And I think these rides are like a staple of the park and they should remain. And I think that by going in there and, and, you know, they have that new technology and adding it into these attractions as they go little by little is a good thing. Something like that would be great. A few years down the road when they want to, revisit the attraction do something like that add the new technology as you go constantly make it fresh and new so we have that you know that newness to it and it stays relevant i'd much rather have that than have the the attraction go stale and then they ultimately get rid of it i want to see these dark rides stay in place i don't want you know them to be replaced by some newer franchise i'd rather them find some other area in the park or i mean in Fantasyland for a tangled ride or frozen i don't, really don't want them to touch these you know yeah i i agree i think honestly the original fantasy land should kind of stay and i know this is horrible of me because I'm, I'm like torn i'm like part of both parties of like we're keeping some nostalgia but we still need to move right. on from it but that's exactly. where you kind of find that loophole is you can keep the classic originality but just up the the technology Right, you know, exactly. you still keep these these great classic attractions, but just update it to keep them refreshed and new. And that's what they did with Peter Pan. That's what they did with Alice in Wonderland. And now that's what they're doing with Snow White. I'm assuming that's probably what they're going to do with Pinocchio. And uh, the the one that I actually am scared for is Mr. Toad's, because I don't know if Disney would invest in any kind of upgrade to the notion of people not really knowing what. The wind in the willows is yeah yeah that's a tough one that's a real tough one like what would stay toad or pinocchio i don't know the times i've gone to the parks i notice much more demand for the toad ride even though i think pinocchio is a much more like visible ip people are more familiar with it but i think the ride itself i think toad is a more popular attraction it's a tough call it's a tough mm -hmm. call if they were to get rid of one of those two I think if they're going to get rid of any of them, one of those is definitely a contender. It's yeah. definitely on the table. Because they're never going to take, they're not going to take out Peter Pan. Well, we all know Peter Pan's not going no. anywhere. Snow White, no. I have to say, I was somewhat convinced that it was going to be, but it was to the notion of after the fact that the attraction now got this update, now I could pretty much say that it's, it's not going anywhere. 
It's safe. Yeah, it's safe. And it's kind of the same thing with like Mickey's Toontown. There were a lot of rumors circling Mickey's Toontown when they were doing Galaxy's Edge or planning for Galaxy's Edge that, they, that Toontown was going to be on the chopping block. And then it didn't happen. And then Mickey Minnie's Runaway Railway sort of cemented the land's place in the park, at least for a long time. And I think the same goes for Snow White. These additions, it's here for at least another decade, I would guess, you know, at least. Yeah. Um, but you mentioned a great point, George. I mean, Pinocchio and Mr. Toad, I I don't know. I mean, it's possible they replace. I mean, Pinocchio is a very, very dark attraction. Very, yeah. very dark. Very frightening, I would imagine, for little children. Um, Can you imagine them just making an oversized audio animatronic of Monstro that's so lifelike that people just don't know what to expect and it just pops out and just scares the living daylights out of everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I love that ride. I love Pinocchio. I hope it stays. I don't mind. Look, I want it to get the treatment that Snow White got. Yeah. I don't mind that, but I hope they don't get rid of it. I honestly, and even to Mr. Toads, I hope they keep both and maybe Mr. Toad still will get an updated to the attraction because to California locals, they really know Mr. Toad. You know, they right. resonate to that attraction. And I think even though that people do travel, you know, to Disneyland, it's still, I don't want to call it a locals park because I do agree with you on that notion. I don't believe it is a locals park, quote unquote. But I think a lot more California locals go to the park more frequently. So, and I think because that they can resonate to Mr. Toad, that would uh, practically maybe almost save it along with Pinocchio. Absolutely. Absolutely. So George, we're going to pivot now into Avengers Campus. Avengers Campus. And again, more, more incredible photos from Dateline uh, uh, Disneyland, uh, micechat.com. Um, so these photos came out and... You know, let me go ahead and just kind of go through these. This is the new entryway mm -hmm. into Avengers Campus. It looks like there's a giant Avengers logo. Very techno, like uh, Tomorrowlandy. Very interesting. What a stark difference. No pun intended. Stark difference uh, from what was there before with the Tower of Terror, right? I mean, this is a completely yes. different style for what was there. Well, and it's nice to actually see the Land of Ron mission breakout to actually get a theme where it fits in. Because before, as much as I love mission breakout, it was literally sitting there like a sore thumb. Yeah, like it was. You, you had Hollywood Land with the Hyperion Theater, and then right around the corner, there's mission breakout. And it's like, okay, yeah. what's, the, what's like the connection to this? But, you know, and we all knew in time we were going to get more Marvel, more Avengers and everything. But... Now that they actually physically see the photo, it blends in perfectly where, it, you know, you could actually start to see a storyline moving. Exactly, exactly. And yeah, you hit the nail on the head. And that's exactly one of the things that I was really excited about for Avengers Campus was that it was finally going to bring Mission Breakout into the park, you know, theme thematically. It was going to fit. It's going to feel like it belongs because since 2000, when did that ride open? 2016. Since then, it's really been a uh, thumb. You know, it's it's been kind of awkwardly looming over Hollywood Land. Now it finally fits into the park. Yes, I agree. It finally fits into the park. Um, so we got more pictures from Mission Breakout. There was there was a lot of weird stuff going on with Breakout. Um, <laughs> they, it looks like here they added. I think these are new. The, this like uh, Terran Treats um, ODV Center. With the weird looking alien luggage, um, Stark uh, Aeronautics, which is interesting. And then this. Okay. Yeah, this, <laughs> this one kind of like I'm looking at it like, okay, what, what am I looking at? <laughs> it's like, yeah. because you kind of get that fut futuristic, like as you said, like Tomorrowland, you know, you get like um, the gadgets, the gizmos. You know, and, and, and plenty. plenty. <laughs> and, you know, I just, <laughs> you, you know, it too, you know, so it was like, I, I had to go there. But then, <laughs> so, then I saw this and I thought like, I know that they have like a lot of like illuminescent type things, like with Pandora at Animal Kingdom oh, yeah. and even in Tomorrowland, you kind of have, or Epcot would have you that you can like have like the lights on the ground where it moves. But like 
this, even in the daylight, it sticks out like a sore thumb. And I'm, you know, I'm still trying to figure out like what, what, how does this re resonate with, with the Avengers? Yeah. It's going to be very interesting. I'm hearing rumors and I don't know this as a fact. I'm just giving, um, giving you guys like what I've heard and from what I'm hearing, which could be wrong, total disclosure from what I'm hearing, it has something to do with some kind of alien goo in um, the collector's fortress mission breakout and the spider bots from web slingers got into the goo. Uh, so it's like a cross kind of like cinematic thing, like you know, Marvel. Everything yeah, connected. So now the we also have to, now we also have to take into consideration too. We got to keep an eye out on the details with this land because not only will these attractions interconnect with each other, it'll also interconnect with the other Marvel lands in in the international parks as well. Right. Right, exactly, exactly. So it's very, very interesting. And I wouldn't be surprised because of the like programmability, so to speak, of Mission Breakout. I wouldn't be surprised that we see closer to the Avengers Campus opening date, um, a, like new sequences for Mission Breakout that sort of explain or tie into this blue alien goo. Um, maybe one of the sequences, the spider bots from the other ride are in your in your elevator shaft and it's like, you know, causing all kinds of problems. I would not be surprised if that is the case. Or there has to be some significance to this because I mean, it's, it's very noticeable. It's, it's yeah. like, it's known. <laughs> it's noticeable. And also, you know, if you, I don't know if you remember this, but like they just redid the tile work in front of mission breakout, like a few months prior to the COVID shutdown. Mm -hmm. Then they go in during the shutdown Stuff. rip all that new tile up and replace it with this. I think for them to waste, not waste, but spend the money so soon after they just redid the tile work, I feel like you said there's something to it. Like there's some sort of story element here that we're not familiar with quite yet, but for them to go in there so soon after they already did the tile work, there's gotta be a reason for this blue goo. And I think it's going to be explained somehow. Or unless too, maybe whatever the web slingers attraction is going to be, maybe they may add a couple more scenes to mission breakout. Right, right. Exactly. Exactly. Now, now this one right here, this looks like a scene off of criminal minds. <laughs> it does. It does. man. It's like what, you know, like these uh, forensic files or something yeah. crazy. I mean, this is like, it, it's, it's pretty wild. It's pretty wild. Look at this. Yes, yeah, and, and Disney will not put something there just to say, let's put it there and make it look pretty. Well, obviously, I mean, it's not really looking pretty, but you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, it yeah, has to be a reason you can kind of see, though. And the reason why I believe the spider bot theory is because if you look here, look you at can the almost see, like the like the like individual like tracks, like I could see like four or five spider bots covered in this goo walking this way. And there are all, all these trails behind each spider bot. You can kind of almost see it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Do you actually think that they could end up not doing a full refurb on Mission Breakup, but maybe like in the queue that they could maybe hide some hidden spider bots that kind of escaped and got into the fortress and they're just kind of hanging out there? They could. Yeah, they could definitely put that in there. I think we're going to see a lot of fun stuff like that with Avengers Campus with this cross themed stuff because that's what marvel does they do the mcu the cinematic universe everything's connected i think within avengers campus we're going to see a lot of that the play that they're going to start each attraction is going to play off of each other i wouldn't be surprised if we see references to breakout in web slingers and things like that i think they're going to see a lot of that fun stuff going on here yeah, with it, the land. it's like when you go into a disney attraction or a ride like snow white for instance you don't see a crossover with Snow White and Mr. Toad. No. You know, it's like that attraction is just that attraction. When you go into that ride, you're going into the world of Snow White or you're going into the world of Pinocchio. It's, right. it's on a one level base where, as you had mentioned with Avengers Campus, everything's going to be kind of intertwined with one another where a story then leads into another story. 
Yeah, and I think that mission breakout really set the stage for what we can expect also in terms of constantly refreshing. Um, I think that, you know, mission breakout has already changed a few times for like the holidays and things like that. I think we'll see more of those changes as we go on. I think the Web Slinger attraction will also change and evolve with the MCU. Um, I think it's going to be an ever changing land, really. And, and that's good for Anaheim because we do have so many annual pass holders or well, we will when they, when they yeah. eventually reinstate. Eventually. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We will have a lot of annual pass holders, a lot of repeat visits. So I think that's good. A good addition, you know, to have that re repeatability, you know, in the park. What do you think about these crazy looking like extraterrestrial lampposts? My God. Yeah. Like I, when I saw that, I thought I would love to see that at night. Like yes. that's just going to be like crazy. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I'm, I'm overall really excited. Um, I'm just kind of like, um, I'm overall really excited for Avengers campus. I like the way they're, they really tied in breakout with the rest of the campus. Um, I'm, but like you, I'm very curious and wondering what the blue alien goo, like blood droplets are very odd. I'm sure they'll explain it, but it's very, very strange without any context. Yeah, very much. But as I said, Disney, I say Disney and Marvel combined, like oh, they, yeah. they have a reason for it. We may not know it. We may think it's one of the most bizarre looking things that was ever created by humankind. And it's like, well, and then after they unveil it, it's like, okay, now that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of people had the same kind of, like reluctancy and, and question marks surrounding breakout. You know, remember we didn't know anything about breakout until we wrote it, but we saw the building long before we wrote the attraction. So when we saw the building with this weird color scheme and the satellite dishes and the circuit boards and all that, we're like, what the heck is this? Then when you ride it, you're like, okay, it makes sense. I know what's going on now. I think we're going to have a similar situation probably with the blue alien goo. It'll be something yeah. like that, you know? Yeah. And what I think is funny about Mission Breakout is it was announced fairly quickly. It right. was announced very, let me rephrase that. It was announced unexpectedly and opened very quickly, I think. In the amount of time of how long Disney usually takes time for an attraction, I think that it, it didn't really take that long. And I know that the building structure was already there. They just pretty much had to reskin it and retheme it. But, I mean, that definitely, you know, caught me by surprise as far as like with mission breakout goes, I was like, Whoa, where is this going coming from? And then it's like, okay, there's a bigger story to it up until we got to the expo where it was like, okay, you know, the, the jig is up, you know, we're making an Avengers campus. <laughs> it, you know, real quick. And then we'll pivot to the next topic. But when at Comic-Con, when they announced that they were going to turn Tower of Terror into a Guardians of the Galaxy ride. I thought they were literally going crazy. That was a nuts uh, idea. What are they thinking? And it actually, it kind of works. Well, because <laughs> when you think of the ride system, automatically you're just thinking of an elevator and you're thinking, right. what does that have to do with Guardians of the Galaxy? Like, right. you know, you don't really see too many elevators in space. So it's <laughs> like... <laughs> exactly. And, you know, the thing too is like Florida in terms of the Hollywood Tower of Terror concept, still to this day has the best version of that yes. concept. And DCA's version always felt like the diet light version of, of Florida. I think it was a smart decision on Disney's part to sort of reinvent the attraction and give it its own identity to separate itself from Florida so it doesn't have to constantly live under the shadow, no pun intended, of the... Florida version. I think it was a smart idea. Well, and I think too that, you know, Disney was so desperate to try to get people into DCA because it didn't have an identity. It right. wasn't very popular. It, it was bashed by critics and guests alike, you know, for a very good reason. Um, so I think they kind of just wanted to have a very popular attraction. What better to do than the Tower of Terror? But, you know, it's like to apples to oranges. But to me, I say, the best way, my, the best analogy I could give for both towers was that the Florida version is like straight from the pharmacy, and the Tower of Terror at DCA was an Equate brand. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. Now, speaking of Florida, we're going to pivot to the cruise lines. 
the cruise lines. Yes. Um, so today was a big deal for the cruise lines. And you actually, from what I understand, watched this giant like live stream announcement, press release, whatever you want to call it, of the Disney wish. So yeah. what's the news on that? I'll let you report on that. What, wow. What's the news okay. on that? <laughs> wow. This was, I got an email from Disney, you know, sharing a link to sign up for this uh, live stream sort of event that was called uh, Once Upon a Disney Wish. And it was for the unveiling of the Disney Wish, the fifth uh, cruise ship in the Disney Cruise Line fleet. And, you know, along with two more ships that are going to be coming out after the Wish, but this was the main focus because the Wish was supposed to actually um, start sailing in January of 2022, but it got pushed back to summer 2022. So everyone was anticipating of like what was all behind it and what have you. And you know how at Disney is sometimes like when they make this big ordeal of an announcement, you think, okay, it's going to be something great. And it's like a two minute little video. And it's like, right. okay, that's it. You know, thanks for joining us. See you real soon. You know, yeah. <laughs> but this was like a 20 to 25 minute presentation and it was done fairly well. And we got to see the new uh, cruise director, um, Mickey, Minnie, and the fairy godmother made special appearances. And they just went through the ins and outs of what it's going to, what the Disney wish is going to be all about. And I tell you what, I am very excited about what's on the horizon, not just for the Disney wish, but for the Disney cruise line ships in the future. You know, as I said, two more ships are going to be coming out and, what have you after the Disney wish. And if this is what they're promising us with just this one, I can imagine what it's going to be like with the other two. Un be unbelievable. Because the Disney wish is going to get, there's going to be the very first ever Disney attraction on a cruise ship. It's going to be at the very top of the ship. It's sort of like um, the crush and gusher and the aqueduct from Disney's Typhoon Lagoon water park and the, uh, the Disney dream and the Disney fantasy. But this is going to have a Mickey and Minnie theme to it where the storyline is you go through the flume and it's enclosed. Wow. And one half of the ship and inside is going to be animation where it's going to be based on like what the type of animation that they're using for Mickey and Minnie's runaway railway. And wow. it's like based off of the new Mickey mouse shorts and you're going to go on the Mickey and Minnie's port misadventures. <laughs> and they're going to take you through a tour of, um, you know, their um, world and everything. And it's going to be based off of a new episode of the Mickey Mouse shorts called Scuba Scramble. Awesome. awesome. So just like with Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, Another part of the Disney industry is getting an episode of the Mickey Mouse short. So again, it's like they're tying everything together, but their own individual attractions. And I thought that was just awesome to have the very first Disney attraction on a cruise ship. And that's, I think that's just awesome. That is awesome. That's incredible. And I think um, what's also exciting is this new Marvel. They're calling it the, a Marvel cinematic dining experience. Yeah. Um, which is exciting for Orlando because as we know, Orlando has their hands are kind of tied when it comes to Marvel. They can only do Marvel characters that are not already at Universal. So that's why they can get away with Guardians and of the Galaxy and Epcot. But like the like the core characters like Captain America, um, Spider-Man, and what have you, they can't use them. But I think they kind of skirt that rule a little bit with the cruise lines because it's on what is it like international waters, I guess? Yeah, or I was gonna say, Cause if they're in the Bahamas or the Caribbean, I don't really think that ties into the whole notion of having Marvel. And plus they have Marvel day at sea already. Right. So you can meet the characters. They have like live performances, meet and greets and you know, what have you. Now they didn't really give too much in depth of what this new restaurant is going to be, but they have said that there are going to be qualities to this restaurant that has never been done before. Ever, not just on a cruise ship. They said ever. Wow. So, yeah, I heard there's going to be some sort of like Marvel adventure or, or, or something going on while you're eating. Yes, yes. And they won't disclose any of that, but I have to take a wild guess. It must be pretty darn dang special for them to not say anything, <laughs> you know, well, up front. 
Well, and you know, we, we were talking about that Marvel connectivity in the last segment about Mission Breakout. Wouldn't it be cool if they add some sort of element from Avengers Campus onto into that Marvel dining adventure to have that sort of connectivity? And it, I wouldn't be shocked if they do. Oh, to have a spider bot or something would be so cool. That would be so cool. And then another uh, feature that they announced was there's going to be this Star Wars type of adult exclusive lounge where it's set up like a bar and a lounge, but behind the bartender, it's going to be themed to all Star Wars. So it's going to have like that cantina feel. And when you look out the window, so to speak, but it's a, an LED screen, you can see that you're traveling to different planets in the Star Wars universe. So one minute you could be traveling to Hoth or you could be traveling to Batu. You could be traveling to Tatooine. It's just going to be this immersive experience that while you're sitting there having a cocktail, you're being immersive in the Star Wars universe. Awesome. Absolutely incredible. I love that. I absolutely love that. Um, th th this seems like they're really, the Disney wish really seems like they're kind of changing the game. And I feel like it's becoming more, and I could be wrong. I want you to correct me if I am. But the other cruise ships feel very kid centric. The, the 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 ideas and the concepts for the wish feel a little more inclusive in terms of like adults too. It doesn't feel so focused on just kids. Like you said, it's like a bar, you know, a lounge. I like that. I love that concept. It, it, it's man, it's enticing. I want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> what it actually comes down to is when you look at the other four cruise ships, which they are immaculate. They're beautiful. Literally, you can eat off their floors. Wow. That they're, they're so clean. I highly recommend you don't, but, you know, I'm just saying that you, <laughs> you know. Don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> don't do it. But with with the Wish, it has this regal, elegant style look to it, to almost where when they say they wanted to make a Disney castle on the water, that's exactly what they did. They have the exterior of a ship but when you enter through the interior you're inside a a palace wow unbelievable unbelievable that yeah the, the stuff that came out of that press release oh it was, was like one, it was one after the other i thought i can't believe that they announced so <laughs> much information and another thing based off of the adults as you said they took the theme of beauty and the beast and they make th they made three different unique styles of sort of dining. So you have the Rose Lounge, which is going to be where you could have a before or after cocktail. Wow. Then you have the dining of Palo Steakhouse, which is going to be themed to Cogsworth. Oh, uh, oh, I love Cogsworth. <laughs> <laughs> so the whole menu is going to be designed as if what would Cogsworth like and. It's based off of the live action Beauty and the Beast. So you have this real, again, regal, elegant style look to it. Awesome. And the the one that I'm looking forward to is the Enchante restaurant that's going to be based off of Lumiere. Oh. And it's they're just going to have like a lot of French cuisine and everything. But again, it's the storytelling of you're having three different experiences, but they're all tied into the same movie. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. Disney is definitely upping their game with the cruise lines and I'm impressed. I'm actually very, very impressed with what came out today. I'm excited for it. Um, and, and, and kudos for them. You know, I mean, we, look, it's been a rough year for Disney parks, obviously. Um, you know, for them to be investing this heavily in the, in the parks, the cruises, I'm happy. It's good for us fans. You know, uh, I think yeah. it's, a, it's a positive thing. Light at the end of the tunnel. Finally. Absolutely. Yeah, because especially with the cruise line that's going through right now, I mean, at least, you know, tomorrow Disneyland officially opens, you know, at, you know, at the time of this recording. Right. And that, you, you know, the cruise line is literally last to open, which Bob Chapek did say the cruise line industry was going to be a challenge, that it was going to probably be the last thing. But the fact of what everything that Disney just released today is like they have the hope and the determination to say, when we do start sailing again, we're getting right back into the groove of what how we left off. And Good. it's no small detail to the Disney wish. 
And, and you know what? I want to I want to actually give credit to Bob Chapek. He gets a lot of a lot of crap in the community for being cheap and what have you. But so far, and I, this is there's a to, this is a total asterisk caveat. Mm -hmm. But so far, he seems to be doing fine. I mean, I seem to be. I don't see any drastic pullback on investment under a Bob Chapek CEO. Now, keep in mind, Bob Iger hasn't left yet, um, not till December. But so far, I mean, I'm 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 satisfied with what he's done so far. Yeah, very much so. And to one last notion of the Disney Wish, because there was a lot of other things that I could get into. I could actually spend a whole hour talking about it. <laughs> but I think this is a very important matter, um, actually based on why they released it today. Okay. That they released based off of the Disney Wish of today that Today is what they call um, All Wishes Day or something like of that nature. Cool. And where Disney donated $1 million to the Make-A-Wish Foundation for kids. Oh, cool. And it was more based upon what the Disney Wish represents. It's like you have that that hope and determination that, you, you know, when you have a dream, you know, it it's surely to come true. And I just thought that it was such a wonderful thing that the company has done, you know, just not even to announce something based off of, you know, for them to, you know, make money or, you know, to bring in revenue based off of everything that, you know, has been going on in the world. But the fact that they're giving back into the community to say, we're giving to this foundation $1 million, despite that the cruise line industry hasn't been running, but we're going to give this for the Make-A-Wish Foundation for Children. And I thought that was just wonderful that Bob Chapek himself actually announced in the presentation. I love that. I absolutely love that. Now, I'm not familiar with Make-A-Wish in terms of how the donation process goes. Can can people, individuals donate to that or is it mostly corporate? Because I'll add a link below if they actually do accept from individuals. I Don't quote me. I believe that you can. I, I believe you can. However, okay. I did mention in my video, which it will be up, um, later on today, uh, during the time of the recording, that if you can't donate to the Make-A-Wish Foundation, I strongly suggested to my viewers that the closest thing that you could do is donate to St. Jude's uh, Research. They do a phenomenal job that every little thing that you give, it goes straight into the research cool. of helping kids with terminal uh, illnesses. That's awesome. That's awesome. I'll link... That one, the St. Jude, send it to me, George, and I'll link okay. it in the in the comment in the description below, and I'll I'll find out about the Make a Wish, and if 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 it's open to donations to everybody, I'll also link that one down below, so people can go ahead and visit that site and donate if they want to. Sorry. I think that's great. But th thank you, George. I, I appreciate you coming on, buddy. Um, you know, uh, let everybody know at home where they can find you on social media. Absolutely. I'm George, also known as the Disney Family Man 23. That is my YouTube channel. Please check out um, check out that. I got videos coming out all over the place. <laughs> you know, more to come. Uh, as I said, I got the Disney Wish one um, that I had done with my friend Mindy that uh, will be released uh, soon. Then you can also follow me on Twitter at Disney George, on Facebook, George Falcione, on Instagram, <laughs> uh, George Falcione, and on the Grand Circle Tour podcast, which could be listened to on uh, Apple iTunes, Stitcher, and um, uh, YouTube. Perfect, 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 perfect. Yeah, subscribe to this guy on YouTube. You're up to what, 41 subscribers now, right? 41? Yes, yes I'm, I'm slowly moving up the ladder. <laughs> You're moving up. Let's get this man to 100 subs. Let's get him to 100 subs. Subscribe to George Disney Family Man 23. He does great content. He does the same kind of stuff I do, but he's more focused on, he's an East Coast guy, right? So you're more focused on Orlando and Florida. So it's a different perspective and it's it's great. You, you should all subscribe to him. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> you know, and, and thank you all for watching and comment below with anything that you want to talk about in terms of the Disney cruises, in terms of Mission Breakout and the alien goo or, you know, the uh, Snow, <laughs> Snow White and the Enchanted Wish changes. Comment below. What are your thoughts on everything love to hear from you guys thank you all so so much for watching and have a marvelous marvelous day bye-bye bye everybody